Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tech with Yashwant. So in the previous video, we saw how to create a Databricks workspace with Unity Catalog enabled in Microsoft Azure. So in this video, I'm going to give you the overview of the workspace interface, explaining what things mean what in Databricks itself. Okay, so the Databricks platform is a frequently updated with enhancements and new features. As a result, the workspace interface in the newer version may differ from the examples provided here in this video. So while the core functionality remains the same, the appearance and the you know, specific layout elements may vary in future. So if you observe this, the interface displays a dynamic landing screen that shows recently accessed items and suggested content, you know, providing a personalized experience for you. So the layout is uh, intuitively organized into two primary sections. So the sidebar and the top bar. So this is the sidebar and this is the top bar. Okay. So uh, to break it down further, let's explore uh, the key components of uh, each section and then we will type further. All right. So firstly, let's understand uh, the sidebar uh, located on the left hand side of the interface. Right. So it offers quick access to your you know, platform's key services and it's organized into several categories, uh, each serving a specific function, right? So firstly, we see workspace, right? So this is an integrated browser where you can organize and manage all your resources such as folders, notebooks and other files as well. So the next thing you see is catalog. So this tab allows you to manage your data and AI assets such as databases, tables and machine learning models. So the recent uh, section will give you uh, the information about what was recently accessed in the entire workspace. Then we have the jobs and pipeline. Uh, here you can deploy and orchestrate you know, Databricks jobs allowing for uh, automated processing and execution of your uh, you know, data tasks. Next you have compute. So this tab uh, is where you create and manage your compute resources such as uh, classic clusters and pools. So we will cover the cluster management in, in the detail in the uh, coming video. So hold on uh, till the end of the series. Next, we have marketplace. So let's say you are an owner of a particular data, cent, uh, data set and you want to uh, make it available on uh, Databricks, you can uh, make sure to do that here. So if I go to marketplace here, you can see uh, a lot of companies offering a lot of things here, right? So uh, you can see Salesforce, DeepSync and uh, all the other organizations, uh, you know, partners delivering their solutions for uh, you know, accurate audience targeting and personalized uh, campaigns. So you can check this out as well. Next, moving forward, we have SQL, right? So the SQL section provides access to Databricks SQL environment, uh, which is a service designed for running SQL workloads on your data. So it is particularly useful for analytics and uh, reporting tasks. So uh, we will be covering more uh, in depth on uh, this in the uh, future videos as well. So hold on uh, till the very end. However, it's important to note that, you know, Databricks SQL is not available in the community edition. So this is one of the reasons why it is recommended for you to use the full trial uh, in your, you know, cloud environment instead of the community edition. I think uh, now uh, it might have changed. Uh, you can refer to their documentation and uh, getting get started with this right so next is a data engineering uh, section where you have job runs and uh, data ingestion so this section focuses on collaboration among data engineers for you know performing advanced uh, data engineering tasks so it includes tools and features that are essential for ingesting data and creating data pipelines and jobs right so in the future videos i'll be covering uh, more as to how we delve into these topics to learn how to build production grade pipelines and orchestrate jobs uh, effectively so all these things we will be doing in future videos the next is ai ml or the playground uh, the things that you see here so this section offers a range of options tailored for machine learning engineers so it includes features such as ml experiments feature stores and capabilities for registering and serving ml models so it's worth noting that 
you know these topics are not included uh, in this particular series because I'm going to create an exclusive series for AI and ML on Databricks separately. So uh, this video, in this particular series, I'm not going to cover that. But in future, I might do it as well uh, based on the interest that I get. Uh, but I see many of the viewers on my channel just view the video and are not subscribing to the channel. So if you do so, it gives me motivation to create more such videos as in future as well. So please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you are liking the content that I'm creating. All right. So next thing we wanted to talk is the top bar. Uh, it you know uh, spans across the top of the workspace interface and provides several important functions. So if you see here, uh, this is the search function here. So this is AI powered search tool. It allows you to efficiently search for various items within your workspace including your tables, notebooks, dashboards, and so much more, right? So it's a essential feature for quickly locating resources in your workspace using the natural language. Uh, the other one is switching the workspace. If you see here, currently I'm using PWI workspace, but if you have more workspaces and you want to switch between the workspaces, if you want to manage multiple workspaces or need to navigate between different projects, so the switch workspace option allows you to easily toggle between them. And then we have this tiny little icon. Uh, they call that as Databricks Assistant. So this is uh, AI powered or AI based workspace assistant designed to enhance your uh, experience with developing notebooks, queries and dashboards. So it provides a conventional interface that facilitates code generation, explanation, and even the troubleshooting part, right? So if, uh, let's say, it, it, if your notebook fails with an error, it troubleshoot uh, troubleshoots the issue to some extent, and it will also let you know what is a probable issue and the documentation link and all those things. So thereby, it boosts your productivity inside the platform, and it also integrates with Unity Catalog to offer features such as table searching with contest awareness and things like that, right? So that's about Databricks Assistant. Next we have is, uh, you know, the profile setting. So the profile setting gives you access to the user related options, such as managing your preferences, linking external services and setting up notification. All these things are provided there. So they also provide access to admin set, uh, specific settings that help you configure your workspace environment a little better. Right. So these are all the things that are available. Next, uh, let's go into the workspace uh, here and see what we have inside workspace. So if I come here inside the workspace, you see a lot of different folders, right? So firstly, let's talk about this home uh, directory. So the home directory is your default location within the workspace and it's personalized to each user's personal directory providing a semi-private space where you can store your own folds, files and the folders. Uh, and then we also see workspace folder here, right? So this is a kind of a root folder that contains all users' personal directories. From here, uh, uh, you can also access your home directory by going to users, right? So if I expand users, I only have one user. I can go into this uh, directory and I can find uh, my home directory inside that. And uh, you can also access your home directory uh, as well. Next, uh, we have a uh, separate folder called uh, repos. So uh, this is a legacy service used for integrating your you know, workspace with Git repositories. And uh, it's now been uh, replaced by Git uh, folder, as I believe. So going forward, you can you know, create Git folders as well, or you can also continue using uh, repos. And there is a trash folder where uh, this folder contains deleted items, which are uh, exactly retained for 30 days before being permanently uh, removed. And you also have favorites uh, where you can, you know, star mark uh, some of the important notebooks or the files or the folders, and that will be available on your favorite section. And then we have a shared environment where uh, this will be available for all the users. And uh, if, if you provide them the right access, they should be able to access uh, this as well. Next, if I uh, show you this icon here, uh, you have you know, Git folder, Git folder, as I told you, like you can create a new Git folder, create a new notebook. If you want to create a file, you can do that. 
uh, if you want to create a new SQL query, you can do that from here. If you want to create a dashboard, you can do that. Uh, Genie space, alert, ML flow experiment, all those things. And if you want to import anything and you want to download a file or something, you can do that here. Uh, any of the DCB, uh, DBC files that you have on your local machine, uh, you can upload that as well. And you can download them as a DBC archive uh, uh, or a source file or a HTML file. And you can also copy the path and the URL and you can also add them to the favorites, right? So these are all the capabilities that you have under workspace section. I hope uh, you are liking what I'm explaining. So uh, in future, uh, we will be you know, delving more into it. And uh, in here, if you observe, I talked, if I click on import, so you will be asked to, you know, choose the file or the URL or uh, whatever the type of, you know, the file that you want to uh, upload, right? All right. So uh, these are all the things that I wanted to cover in this particular video. Uh, in the next video, I'll show you how to create a cluster and how to manage a cluster in Databricks environment. So if you are liking the content that I'm creating, please consider subscribing and share it with your friends. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video.